Welcome everyone to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And here I am on an excessively windy day and I'm hoping that this audio is going to come out alright. Still, as you can see in the distance there, there's a valley. But fear not if that looks a little far away. Here's a little snippet of what I zoomed out from earlier. So get your, get your eyes around that, isn't it lovely? Even on windy days like today. But this is the trouble with being in Britain. You want to get up onto a hill because the hills have got lovely views on them. You've got these nice valleys and the valleys have got rivers and everything is so green and there are so many trees around and everything and it's all so lovely. But then you end up in the wind and that's part of the problem. We're on an island, an island which has prevailingly southwesterly winds and to our southwest we've got a vast ocean and then to our east we've got a, a supercontinent if you can call Afro-Eurasia a supercontinent. Right, so, um, although I promised you in the last video that I was gonna do some anti-bling, right, by attaching um, my GoPro mount to this camera, I tried it, everyone, I did try it, and it didn't work out to be as efficient in practice. No, it didn't. The problem being, of course, is that this camera is a little bit too heavy, and with the extra, adapters and tools I needed to get it on there it made the whole thing a little bit too top heavy for me to use and as a result caused uh, the picture to be even more jittery which despite the uh, image stabilizer built into this new camera would only end up cancelling it out and it ended up with the same jittery I was back to square one so what did I do well this microphone holder adapter which I used for my zoom H devices uh, comes in really handy because it goes in the bottom here keeps everything nice and simple and in the absence of having myself um, a selfie stick or a gimbal I just use that that works out okay the only problem is of course I need more stamina and it means I have to keep changing arms every now and then because it is it is quite difficult for me to do so I have to go walk around and get out the wind now one of the good things is that I can monitor myself as I'm filming this you know with the screen so try and make it look a little bit less amateurish by trying to keep myself in the picture so to speak but then it means that I'm looking like I'm looking to one side I should be looking directly at you the viewer should I not so what I would before I start actually before I start I've got to say I don't know if the audio is going to come out all right it's excessively windy and um, I have a furry mic shield but I did attempt to do this yesterday and the wind picked up on the mic, right? It really did and uh, it wasn't good. So you know what I've done today? I actually cut up a sponge. I cut up a washing up sponge and I shoved it inside the mic on the Zoom H1N up there. And then I put the furry mount up there so it's doubly reinforced. Hopefully this will work today. Right, so yes, today I wish to talk about the concept of stoicism and how important it is at a time like this to be stoic. Now, having not had um, a Greek classical education of the ancient Greeks and all that, I know nothing about the original people that were called the Stoics. However, my God, it's windy. However, what I do know is that that's where they get, that's where the word get, comes from, yes. And Stoicism basically is there was this uh, YouTuber, there's this YouTuber called uh, Bjorn Andreas Bullhansen, a Norwegian novelist who makes videos, and he said something about this in a previous video that he did, about how you don't have to feel everything. And that's what someone said to him, and he found that very profound, and as a result, he found that quite ultimately um, life-changing. It made him think about the concept of stoicism, how, yes, you don't want to be a kind of a, a disembodied intellect, really, you know, or an intellect on a stick, you know, going around seeing the world, you know, with your with your left hemisphere and being an intellectual smart ass and not actually feeling what it's like to be alive. Of course, you want to feel, right? But he said you don't have to feel everything, and there are times, right, when feeling can be overwhelming. And as we are in a time like the one we're in at the moment, where We've never been in a time like this in modern history. 
in post-modern history. We've never been in a time where the whole world has gone into lockdown because of an invisible enemy. Now, of course, we've had plenty of the problems that invisible friends can bring along. I'm talking about religions here, right? So, that aside, but the invisible enemy, a virus going around that we can't see, we can't detect, we know nothing about. Right to the point where it's so novel, the doctors don't really know enough about it. They don't know about how it manifests itself. And I don't think as a result of that, they know how to correctly diagnose it. And I don't think even think they know how to correctly diagnose causes of death. Right, I've just kind of got into this uh, woodland. There's a lot of sheep around me. Um, you can't really see them there. They're off camera. But what I will do quickly is I'm just gonna uh, show you some um, sheep and some lambs that I saw earlier so you can have yourself a butcher's oh, they're, they're just so lovely but it's a shame they're so timid I, I really would like to um, go up and stroke them probably see them in the background there quite a few of them around me there you go right so yes think about the emotions as like um, a graphic equalizer when you're recording drums and you've got uh, muddy frequencies in the 400 hertz range you need to dip with a graphic equalizer if you're recording speech say for instance you might get some sibilance on the s's and whether you're using a de or a graphic equalizer or a dynamic eq you have to duck the s sounds if they're too um if they're if they're too loud you see and then of course a bit lower into the treble into the 4 to 8k range you've got some really horribly grating piercing sounds there right and of course you have to make sure that whatever the hell you do you, you gut them as well you take them out now why would I talk it in that kind of way emotions are much the same right just like uh, the Stoics would do I suppose is they would not want to feel overwhelmed they would want to be able to stay sane by not allowing themselves to feel too much. They would think that, right, when things go a bit bad, when things are tough, if we're being conspired against and we don't know by a secret cabal, and like I say, I am agnostic on that. I don't know what to think one way or the other. But um, when I see on social media the hysteria and the irrational insanity of all these people never fucking stopping talking about all the people who want to take our freedoms and our human rights away from us now look all right if something happens right as a result of what's going on at the moment then i will stand corrected if i'm wrong but it's just that i've been spending years even before all this years watching people on social media never ever stopping talking about the conspiracies that are supposed to be happening to us and the problem with that is it becomes a little bit like crying wolf and it is a bit hysterical and I have seen as the years have gone by more and more people who have gone a specific type of insane yeah I have known people over the years who have gone a specific type of insane that had never seen before modern times at least this side of the 1990s I'd never seen it it is what I call conspiracy paranoia or conspiranoia. Now I know people might think that's a bit of a pejorative or derogatory phrase to use but I've seen it and I think that you need to have a strong mind in a time like that, in like this. We may be being conspired against and there may be some horrible implications for the future and there's always the fight for our freedom. It's an ongoing struggle all throughout history it always has been and it's something we have to make sure that we can rest back from malevolent adversaries if we lose it again all right now that's understood and that is most certainly most certainly understood by me i know that right but the problem is you don't want to go so conspiranoid that you lose your mind in the process because how easy is it to lose a mind it's very easy your mind's gone and you're a paranoid wreck and you don't want to let that happen to you it's not wise to let that happen to you. So you need to dial down those extraneous, extreme emotions with your graphic equalizer, with what I call your, your stoicism plug-in, so to speak. And if you do that, right, those 
four to eight K range, the, the 400 Hertz range of your emotional state that is causing you to be a little bit too much of a, a fucking wreck when it comes to um, what you feel, right? Because you're really paranoid because of all this stuff that is making you extremely paranoid. And the paranoia is, and the hysteria and the fear is making you irrational and it's, it's making you insane. <laughs> what is the point of all that? Because look, those who wish to conspire against you have already got inside your mind then, haven't they? If they've made you conspiracy paranoid, they've already got inside your mind by stopping you from being able to feel your inner peace, you know, and uh, clarity of mind. Stopping you from being able to, well, to go into a state of what can you achieve, what can you envision, what can you do to make your life and the reality around you better. You're not thinking about that when you're thinking about all the ways that you're being conspired against all of the time. And that's my real concern for a lot of people. They ain't practicing the necessary stoicism they need to practice in order to be able to be sane. So yes, I know that sensitivity, emotional sensitivity, um, can be a gift and a curse. I know it can be a pain in the arse to feel too much and all those years I wasted getting stoned. A long time ago now, I really did get overwhelmed by all that I felt, and it wasn't good. It really, truly wasn't good. Now, so, of course, now I'm uh, in a much more clear state of mind, and I'm in a much more clear state of being. And now, of course, I am um, focusing on every time I see a conspiracy, Another thing about Bill Gates and his digital passports, or another thing about 5G and the radiation, and more stuff about whether, of course, um, the Lurgy is a bioweapon or not, and what the future means, and whether we're ever going to be allowed to mix, go to gigs or clubs or down the pub ever again because of the social distancing rules and all this stuff that people say, or these sound bites that get repeated over the media and end up on social media being shared and all the people who freak out about all of this stuff and I say stop stop dial down all those crazy emotions that all this stuff makes you feel and then ask yourselves questions so and so said something oh, does that mean it's going to happen? no First, it has to go through Parliament, then it has to be voted on, then it has to get royal assent, at least if you're in the UK. Then it has to become legislation. That can be a pain in the arse. And then you've got all these international organisations, like Bill Gates' foundation, or like the World Health Organisation, like all these international bodies. They want to get something done? Well, there's a few things they can get done quite quickly, but the problem being is, as you know, so many governments have to agree on so many things. Right. And then um, it becomes very complex and very incredibly complicated to implement certain things to get it to be done. And then of course these things don't work. So, <laughs> you know. So we just kind of got to be hopeful. But then of course there is the other dilemma. I'm still travelling when I can and so are you. We're still taking our shoes off. Right, we're, we're going through those detectors. We're doing all that faffing. Now, I don't know which is the worst thing to lose, you know, in all of this. The, I don't know, really. I don't want to download a tracking app if I can help it, right? But as well as me not wanting to download a tracking app or not wanting to have, um, to succumb to an international digital passport, issued by Bill Gates, I also don't want to be restricted from travelling. That's a dilemma. Gonna have to lose one of these rights either way if this stuff is implemented. Right? I'm gonna have to lose something if one of these things is implemented. And I want still to be able to travel because I do not want to be stuck on this island. And I'm thinking realistically about it, pragmatically about it. I don't know what's right, I don't know what's wrong. I don't even know how to be an activist in this. But I do know that with stoicism, right, how I think, how I feel, the fear of all of this stuff, as I said, 
the conspiracy being the conspiracy, right? How they get you to react with their psyops. Every time there's a psychological operation, what effect does it have on your state of mind? What effect does it have on your, um, how you feel? How irrational does it make you become? And that's why stoicism, I think, is a very important thing, because then you can dial all that down. And that's the most important way that they control you at this point, right? You can be in a cell, you can be in a room, with the right kind of spiritual practices and with the right kind of yoga and emotional control practices, thinking techniques, you can become a free man inside yourself, even if your body is not free in the physical world, you see? And that, I think, is a good place to start from, right at this point onwards, as we don't know where we're going and we don't know what's going to be implemented. Don't just automatically fear the worst and freak out. It might be that bad in the end, but it might not be. And so that basically is um, the crux of all that I'm saying, Hammer, today. Incidentally, and I keep forgetting to do this, so I want to um, show you something. On the way here, on the way to this lovely bit of rolling fields with all those sheep, old sheep in the farmer's fields and the hills and the valleys and all that lovely lush green. On the way here, um, I go past uh, this house which has got some nice palm trees that I want you to see. So I'm just going to flick over, look at that. Lovely Chusan palms. Yeah, now this is amazing I think man. We are 50 degrees north of the equator here. We're, for you American viewers, above the 49th parallel. So that basically means that you go north of Seattle, you go north of the 49th, you go north of Vancouver, and then 40 miles above Vancouver. That's when you're at the same latitude that I am now, right? And yet, we can grow things like that. You'd have to go south of Portland, wouldn't you, to be able to grow them? No, actually, I think you could probably grow them in Seattle, right? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm really not sure. But I love being, you know, in a place that can be so far north that we can have these extremely long days in the summer because of our almost polar latitude. But our winters can be so mild that it can allow for us to grow subtropical looking things. You know, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, as I said in the previous episode, it's an anomalous place. Had I not travelled, I wouldn't have realised that. It would just be normal to me. So there you go. Right, I shall leave you with that before I go and get on um, with the next episode from a new location, I think. So, see you later, alligator. See you soon, a baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Also join the Facebook group, follow us on Twitter and subscribe on BitChute. It's early days for us yet, so please help this channel grow and it will be gratefully appreciated if you do.